Hey guys, welcome back and if you're new to this channel, my name is Matt and I'm a junior doctor working in London. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the application process and the key dates to be aware of when you're applying for the UK Foundation Program to get your Foundation Year jobs. Two to three years ago, I was also in a similar position at the end of medical school, applying not knowing what to do. Full of uncertainty about becoming a doctor, which was super, super exciting, but also slightly intimidating and just full of uncertainty. In your final year of medical school, you apply for something that is called the UK Foundation Program, which is a rigorous application process that essentially allows you to get matched with your foundation program and your job for the next two years. This is something that all final year medical students and all international medical graduates to the UK have to complete. So it's really important to know the key details before you apply and lock in your choices. To clarify, when I'm speaking about the foundation program, I'm speaking about the normal foundation application process compared to the academic foundation program, which is a slightly different application process. I do touch on aspects of the AFP this time, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to focus on the main application. So, going into it, the UK Foundation Programme applications consist of 100 points, of which the first 50 points are from the Educational Performance Measure Score, and the second 50 points from the Situational Judgment Test. The 50 points from your Educational Performance Measure Score, or EPM score, consists of several main things. First is the EPM Decile Score, which is pre-allocated by your medical school depending on your ranking through your first and fourth year, and this is calculated by deciles. The points range from 34 points to 43 points, and works in the way that the top deciles, the top 10% of the year, receive 43 points, the next 10% of the year receive 42 points, and so on until the bottom decile receives 34 points. In this way, it credits those who have worked really hard and done well medical school, but it also doesn't give them a hugely unfair advantage when applying. The second thing that can get you points are additional degrees, and I will break that down in a table that I hopefully will put somewhere here. Essentially, if you've done a bachelor's, master's, or a doctorate degree, all of those are worth points, and obviously the better you do with the classes, the more points you get. And you can get a total of five points for this. The final thing that you can score points for on the EPM are publications, and you can score a maximum of two points for this, one per publication. Several notes about this, first of all being that you have to have a PubMed ID for the publication for it to be valid, and the second thing is that you need to be a titled author. Unfortunately, they do not accept publications which are currently in press or have been accepted and not released yet. It's worth bearing in mind that the cutoffs for registration of these educational achievements are very strict. For the 2020-21 cohort, I believe it is 4th of November 2020. So definitely bear that in mind when you're trying to squeeze a couple of publications in or you're looking to get evidence for your degree. So the timeline of the application process begins on a website called Oreo and you should have been sent a login for this from your school email. Through this, you should register to apply from your medical school and then choose to apply for a foundation program. Essentially, there are quite a few bits and bobs to fill in, including things like fitness to practice, eligibility, references, criminal record and personal details. On your Oreo, you should also be able to see your educational performance measure decile score, which is pre-allocated to you by your medical school and as we mentioned earlier, forms a bulk of your educational performance measure score. This is also the space to declare any publications that you've previously done or any previous degrees that you've had and you need to show evidence for this. For example, a degree can be documented through a degree certification or a publication through a PubMed ID. So definitely pop that on the system and double check it before you submit so there are no ambiguities when you're applying and calculating points. Finally, the most important thing that you will be doing on Oreo is ranking your foundation schools. Foundation schools are essentially a group of hospitals or trusts that facilitate your training throughout your two foundation program years. And there are 20 foundation schools and 15 academic foundation schools, which span the area of the UK to Wales to Scotland. So you can actually apply to go in any of those places. You essentially have to rank all the foundation schools from 1 to 20. The way that foundation school applications are done is that once you've locked in your points out of 100, it takes the top ranked applicant with the most points, gives them their top priority choice of foundation school, and continues going down that list. If they go down this list and they find that the next applicant's top priority foundation school is full, then they move to their second priority foundation school, and so on and so forth. And if your second choice foundation school is also full, then they move to your third choice. Note that while they ask you to select your preferences for foundation schools quite early, you can actually change that basically up until right the last minute. The cutoff is usually about February, and I know for this year, for the 2020-21 cohort, the date is actually the 18th of February 2021. So my advice would be to look around, have a look at which hospitals you want to work in, district versus tertiary hospitals, whether there are any particular specialties that you are interested in in certain hospitals, and which area geographically you want to be in. Obviously factors like family, friends, 
places that you want to work in the future to come into account. So moving on, between November and December is when academic foundation program interviews happen and you will also get confirmation of your total educational achievement scores which can be appealed if they're wrong in a short window. So the next bit of your foundation program application is the situational judgment test and this is the pain of every final year medical student's lives. It is essentially a test of meeting the attributes to be a foundation doctor as specified by the foundation program specifications. I don't know what that means, it's not really an assessment of your clinical knowledge. If you think back to your UCAT slash UKCAT, there was a section asking you about clinical scenarios and what would you do in this situation if your supervisor did this or who you should escalate to. That is essentially what the SJT is, but the differences between the answers are even more minute. It's really just not one of those exams that you can study for. I know as medics, we would be lining up with our pitchforks and be like, an exam in medical school that you can't study for? But yeah, it is how it is. The SJT is an invigilated exam of 70 questions in 2 hours and 20 minutes that ultimately accounts for 50 marks of your total 100 of your EPM score. This is normally done around December to January, but it depends on your medical school. Moving on to the new year. In January, the Academic Foundation Program offers are released first. The deadline for locking in your foundation school preferences is the 18th of February 2020 for this cohort. After this, you simply have to wait till mid-March when they finally will tell you which foundation school you have been allocated to. The rest of the month is what they call a program matching period, where once you've gotten into foundation school, you get sent a list of foundation programs, which are essentially two-year programs consisting of six jobs, each job four months each and they will be the jobs that you could potentially be doing in your foundation year one and year two. Some foundation schools are a little bigger and they've got two tiered preference matching systems. For example I was in South Thames Deanery and just because there's so many of us you had to first pick your rough geographical location and matching and then you got sent to a list of foundation programs which you then had to rank. Again you just match the programs in your order of preference and the allocation system is essentially the same as a foundation school in which the top ranked applicant with the most points will get their first choice job and they'll go down the list matching to the first job, second job, third job and so on. Just a word of advice, this process can take hours and hours because there are so many foundation programs and also it's like taking a stab in the dark. How are you supposed to know if a specialty at this hospital you've never heard of is good? Are you supposed to pick specialties that you want to do in the future or do you pick specialties that you know you're not going to do in the future just for the exposure? It can be difficult to pick your jobs and I certainly struggled with that. I didn't know what I was doing and that is why shortly after this video I will be making one about how you pick your foundation jobs in terms of hospital, location, specialty, and how you can factor in your future career in this decision. So if you want to be the first to see that video and get ahead of your peers, click subscribe down below and stay tuned for the next video. Finally, after a year long rigorous process, you finally get matched with the foundation program that you'll be doing for your F1 and F2. And it will feel good to have some degree of certainty and to know where you're going to be for the next two years. Unfortunately for a minority of candidates, they will not have been allocated to a foundation school post and will go on to something called a reserve list, which they will then get allocated spots based on availability. And at the very end, you begin work as a fresh foundation first year doctor. So lots to look forward to and F1 and F2 are sick so you're definitely gonna have a great time. So guys this has been a whistle stop tour of the UK foundation program application and I wanted to make this just because I struggled when I was making my application and I just found some information so hard to find. The key dates for this year's cohort are in the description down below. I know that there are a couple of elements of the foundation program application that I haven't touched on such as priority applications, linking and in particular academic foundation programs and this is just because I wanted to keep it short and succinct but if there was any particular element that you wanted me to talk about or wanted to get some advice about a certain thing please feel free to leave a comment down below and I will try my best to get back to you but for now that is the end of the video thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time